Welcome back to the Make or Break Shop. This week we're gonna be making one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven no ish picture frames. And then we're gonna be putting them all up on a nice picture wall. So we are working on tons of these walnut frames. And to get to this point, I'm starting just with a pretty stock piece of walnut that I'm milling down and then cutting down to size. Overall, the process is I'm trying to get these down into strips and they're about three quarters of an inch thick and then they are about two inches wide. So first I'm taking it across the jointer to get two sides that are square to each other and then I am ripping it to size on the table saw and then getting it to the final thickness on the planer. Then they all need this groove on the inside. So I have a place where I can mount the glass as well as the artwork and then the actual frame. It's about three quarters of an inch wide and a half inch deep. And what's nice is once I get everything set up, I can take all of these pieces through at the same time because I have a whole lot of pieces and a whole lot of frames to put together. So we're doing these a bunch of different sizes and I have these cut into lots and lots of different strips. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Lots, lots of picture frames. These plus, this one gives me nine. And we've got artwork for most of these, but we still need to actually print out a few other pieces for these guys. Now that uh, we've got the frames pretty much put together, we actually need to get some photos printed out. And I wanted to include this because uh, I've had a hard time getting good prints in the past. So uh, the first thing is I'm actually going to jump into Lightroom. You don't have to use Lightroom. Um, you really could use any photo editing. I brought in the photos that I am going to print out. And the idea is that since this will not be backlit, I just want to bring the brightness up just a little bit to hopefully compensate for that. So I am just going to adjust the exposure just a little bit and then uh, make sure these are cropped uh, correctly. So this is actually going to be a eight by 10. And so we're gonna make sure she is in the right spot. And then we are going to export and these are going to be 100%. And I'm gonna change the resolution to 300 pixels per inch. So the service that I'm going to be using to actually get these printed out is called Nation's Photo Lab. Uh, I'm not using like Shutterfly or even like a local Walgreens or CVS just because we haven't had the best luck on doing these type things. So super easy, just adding in the photos. So now we are going in and actually printing these out. And like I said, this is an eight by 10. So I'm making sure I get the right size, add to cart. And then one thing I wanted to show you guys, so the crop should be good because we've already done it, but this is something we're gonna try out because the mat is actually going to cover up the photo just a little bit. And so just so I make sure I'm getting the full print like I want it, I'm gonna go into here where actually I'm gonna add a photo border, which is nice with this service. I'm gonna make it white and I'm gonna make it a quarter of an inch and you can't see it. So I'll show you what it looks like if you go black and you can see it right there. This is something you could do like in Photoshop or even in Lightroom, um, but I'm gonna try to do it actually just with the service and we're gonna see how it goes. So I'm going to finish up the rest of these pictures and send them over to Nation's Photo Lab and hopefully get the prints back pretty soon. So now that we have all of these strips cut to size, I need to cut miters on all of these corners. And to do that, I'm gonna be using a miter cut jig for the table saw. So what's nice about this jig is it is right at 90 degrees. And then when I have two pieces that I wanna match up, they're gonna be cut on opposing ends. So I'm about to go through all six of these frames and get all of these miters cut. So we've got all of these guys cut out. We've got the miters done, we are good to go, and one's already glued up. So what we're gonna do is glue the rest of these together. This is gonna be a pretty simple process. This isn't the strongest joint by any means, so uh, none of you guys hate on me. <coughs> uh, I'm just gonna glue it together, and instead of using clamps, I'm gonna use good old tape because I don't have enough clamps to do all of these. And potentially what I might actually do is come back and put a spline in the edges of all of these, but we'll see how that is once we get there. Again, just doing some glue on all the edges. 
and I'm about to make a big old mess. And then I'm just going to tape these pieces together and I've actually already put on way too much glue. So remember when I said these miter joints aren't the strongest, but I should be all right. This isn't the strongest joint by any means. Well, I wasn't. I actually had them very precariously, pre precari precariously drying uh, when I put oil on them. And so I broke several of these. The good part is they broke right along where you'd expect right on the miters. And so I'm gonna have to glue them back together. Because of that, now I'm gonna go back and actually do splines on all of the corners of this guy. And uh, splines are pretty straightforward. I am using a jig on the table saw to uh, cut out the holes on all four corners of each of these frames. And then I'm coming back on the table saw, cutting out a pretty thin piece of wood that's gonna match that width, gluing it together. So we got the two that I messed up glued up. And we have put the splines in. Now that we've got this out of clamps, I need to take it to the table saw and trim these areas off. Um, I'm gonna trim just a little bit of the edge off um, so that I get a good flush cut. And then I'm gonna wind up having a few gaps and we're just gonna fill those with sawdust and a little bit of glue because uh, some of these splines weren't quite long enough with the stock bag. So the finishing process for these is pretty easy. All I'm doing is adding just a little bit of General's Armor Seal. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple coats of that, sand it back, and we are good to work on the mats in the glass. So now we are working on all the framing. We've got lots of pictures. This is 10 by eight. And so now we are going to cut out uh, the mat. Um, I could have measured all of these the same, but then I wound up actually cutting the mats to the actual size of the frame. And then using this bevel mat cutter, uh, I was able to not only cut the mat, but then also cut the inside hole at a 45 degree angle. These are white mats, but if they'd been a color mat, then you'd actually see kind of the white on the inside. So this was actually a frame that we were trying to match. And you can see that this is white right on the inside. So it adds that cool effect, but really you could just cut this straight with an X-Acto knife and a straight edge and you're good to go. So once we've got the mat in place, the next step is to cut the backer piece. Uh, I've actually just used cardboard in the past, but this was actual backer board. I got this, I think, at Hobby Lobby. You can get these in really big sheets for about $10, and I only used two for like 10 frames. And then the last step was to get the glass to size. I had to actually wind up cutting my glass, so you had to score it and then snap it off. I broke a couple doing this. It's always kind of iffy if I'm gonna get it to work right. One suggestion I would have for you guys is to check out the standard glass sizes at your big box store. Then I would have the actual inside of your frame to whatever dimension that is, and then work your way backwards to the size of the picture. So then you're not having to cut glass and mess stuff up like I am. And then the very last step is using these little pins um, and you can hammer these in. They make a special tool that you can get, but I just used a hammer. But uh, these are really cheap and all of the hardware that I used, there's a link down in the description. And then last but not least, you're adding in just a little hanger. So you can see that we did a bunch of different ones, your smaller five by sevens, and then you had ones for larger eight by tens. And then I had about two inches as a gap on the actual mat. And then we had a few custom ones for some posters that we wanted to put up. All right, so we've got all of these pictures, but they are not gonna stay in the shop because that would be ridiculous. We're gonna get all of these up along the wall in our stairwell. So as I am slowly getting these up along the walls for our stairs, I wanna thank the awesome people that support this channel over on Patreon. Uh, it would not be possible to do that, so thank you guys so much. If you'd like to support the channel and all the projects that we have going on, uh, you can find a link down below or head over to patreon.com forward slash make or break shop. Also, while you are here, we do a podcast on a weekly basis where we talk to lots of people in this maker community and you guys can check that out at the make or break show again all the links and descriptions are right down below all right so it looks like i'm getting close to being done or i'm really about to mess something up either way let's get back over to it so 
so after lots of nails and lots of holes, we got all of these pictures up. We actually have a few more frames. Uh, what's nice about this is since I built the frames, they are pretty much exactly the same. And it'd be really easy uh, to get some more walnut and add some more frames all up and along this stairwell. There's actually a cool trick you can do with painter's tape that I forgot about where you kind of flip it inside out on the very back of the frame where the hook is going to be, push it up against the wall, painter's tape stays on the wall, and then you can figure out where the hole exactly needs to go. So if you guys are doing something like that, I would suggest going that route versus all the holes that I put in this. And actually this isn't all the picture frames that we had to put up along this wall. We got some others in some other spots, including one that is Pawnee National Park. It's actually a completely separate video and we're gonna jump into that right now. So until next time, go make or break something in your shop. See you guys.